Okay, if you want to do great in algebra, well, these problems here, something like this should be very easy to you, and you're going to need to be able to get these problems correct every single time. Okay, so really this is kind of like middle school uh, math, but uh, I can tell you right now, as a math teacher for many, many years, a lot of algebra students will get this problem wrong. So I'm just curious, can you get this problem right? If you can, put your answers into the comment section. Of course, I'm going to go over uh, this problem, and you're going to be able to see whether you made a mistake or not. But I can guarantee you, probably half of you watching this video are going to make an error. And of course, this is going to really um, you know, uh, impact you negatively in your algebra course. So let's go ahead and get you to learn exactly what to do in these type of problems. And the topic here is what? Well, we're dealing with the order of operations. Uh, that is the topic, and we're going to be talking about this thing called PEMDAS. So if you are one of these students who are like, oh, I remember learning that. I know this perfectly. Well, I'm telling you right now, you're going to make a mistake, okay? Or at least many of you are going to make a mistake. So we'll just see how well uh, you learn PEMDAS here in just one second. But first, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And over those years, I've learned that all students can be successful in mathematics, but it requires two things. One, the student has to be willing to work. So if you're trying to learn math, but you're not willing to take notes or do your homework, you're going to have a tough time. But the second thing you need is clear and understandable math instruction, and that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave um, links to all my stuff in the description of this video. By the way, if you happen to be preparing for a test, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, or like a teacher certification exam, I can help you out. And if you homeschool, I could definitely help you out. And if you need some math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get into this problem. Again, I'm going to really encourage you to pause the video and do this. And when you do this problem, write out all your steps, okay? Uh, just don't, you know, plug this into a calculator. So put your calculator aside, get your final answer, and put it into the comment section. And let's go ahead and get going here. All right, so I got two ways that I just kind of listed. There's other ways you could do this problem. But uh, here is our problem. And here I have uh, an answer of 30. And here I have an answer of 174. So I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. One of these is right. One of these is wrong. Now, if you came up with another number, then you know, you you know, you definitely have to watch the rest of this video. So which one of these is correct? Okay, so let's uh, take a look at this first problem. So here we got 3 times 8 plus 20 divided by 2 times 5. So maybe we'll go like this, right? Uh, 2 times 5, that's 10. Oh, well, that makes sense. 2 times 5 is indeed 10. So now I'm going to go uh, 20 divided by 10. Well, that's 2. Right? Well, I, so far, I haven't made any math mistakes, uh, at least in terms of these basic operations. So 8 plus 2, that's 10. Okay, so 3 times 10 is 30. So this looks pretty good to me. Okay, so I'm like, well, all right. I could be uh, somewhat you know, convinced that this is the right answer, and maybe this is the right answer, but let's take a look at this other way of doing this problem. So here's our problem, and now maybe this time I'm going to go hmm, 20 divided by 2. That's 10. So instead of doing 2 times 5, I'm going to uh, start here. 20 divided by 2, that's 10. So 10 times 5 now, that's 50. This is good right here, right? So 50 plus 8 is 58, and 58 times 3 is 174. Well, this looks good um, as well. So which one is it? So maybe some of you are out there going, hmm, you know, which one is it? I'm not quite sure. Well, um, uh, the answer is... Uh, it's this, right? So I kind of tricked you. If you thought I was going to say 30, that is incorrect. The answer is this. So for those of you who got this right, I'm going to go ahead and give you a nice happy face for being so awesome in math. Matter of fact, if you don't want to watch the rest of this video, just hit the like button, check out my math help program and take off and, you know, uh, do some Minecraft or whatever you want to do. But listen, if you got this uh, answer 30, or if you got another answer, you don't feel bad because a lot of students don't know the order of operations as strongly as they think they do. So let's get into exactly why uh, this answer here is 174, but we're only using this as an example to review 
uh, the order of operations, which, of course, we can uh, remember by this phrase here. Now, uh, most of uh, you out there learn this phrase, maybe uh, something a little bit different, but I would say 90% of math students learn this. And uh, we refer to this as PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, and a little uh, phrase that goes along with it. There's a few of these things. You can say, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All right, so if you want to remember PEMDAS, uh, that's what it is. It, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. But really, this is Sally. Uh, really, what this is here is uh, it tells us the order, okay, of operations. Okay, now what are operations? Now, we're not talking about going to the hospital having an operation. We're talking about mathematical operations. So if I have the number 2 and 7, what can I do with those numbers? Well, I can add them. I can subtract them. I can multiply them. I can divide them. I can even take powers to the seventh. These are examples of mathematical operations, okay? So we're talking about mathematical operations, but we're talking about what order do we do them in, okay? But let's go back over here. Here, I decided uh, to do division first, and over here, I did multiplication first, all right? So is there an order? Well, it's, there certainly is uh, a correct order because if you just take any miscellaneous order, you will end up doing this uh, wrong. So we have to take a specific order, uh, and of course that is following the order of operations. That's what this is all about. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and quickly go over this PEMDAS, then we'll cover this problem, and then I'm gonna encourage you to follow through with practice problems and maybe check out some more videos on my YouTube channel on this topic if you are still confused. Uh, but if you really wanna learn this stuff, I would uh, definitely check out any one of my math courses pre-algebra, algebra 1, or beyond. I really get heavy duty into this. But let's cover PEMDAS here, the order of operations, uh, real quick uh, for those of you that are confused. So the P stands for parentheses, but it's not just parentheses. It's what we call grouping symbols. It could be little brackets like that or little squiggly brackets like this. So anytime you see these things, you want to uh, work from the inside out. So let's say you have a math problem with parentheses here. There's some maths in there. There's brackets here like this, you go to the innermost parentheses or grouping symbols first. Once you're done with that, then you kind of keep expanding out, okay? So that's what the P is if you were uh, confused about that. E stands for exponents. Basically, these are like powers, like two to the fifth power. So if you see any exponents, um, any powers, you're gonna do those first. M stands for multiplication, and then D stands for division, and this is gonna be the main part of this video that most students get confused about. So you wanna look at M and D and A and S. A and S, you probably guessed it's addition, and then S is uh, subtraction, okay? Here is the big deal about the order of operations. Uh, the, the way it works for these, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, is whatever you see first from left to right. So uh, where most students get confused is they think I have to do multiplication every single time be, uh, before division because it comes uh, first in PEMDAS. You see the M, you're like, okay, anytime there's multiplication, I will do that always before division. Well, no, if division comes first from left to right, like in this problem, you see division from left to right is first, okay? Then multiplication, so that's the way it works, okay? So basically, you could write PEMDAS as P E D. M if your division uh, comes first and then uh, S, A. So anyways, when you remember this PEMDAS, this is the way it works. And this is the little uh, kind of detail that throws a lot of students. Either they weren't taught that clear enough or they forget about it and they just strictly go, oh, I got to do multiplication every single time, division, etc." So if you're saying to yourself, wow, okay, that makes all the difference in the world. Let's go back over here and see this mistake. I have uh, multiplication, I'm sorry, I have division here, then multiplication. So, you know, I'm like, oh, PEMDAS, I got to do the M first. So this was kind of for me tricking you. And, you know, math teachers are famous for trying to construct math problems that kind of throw students off. Uh, so anyways, if you made this mistake, I could tell you right now, probably half of you out there did. But again, don't worry, math, you know, making mistakes is perfectly normal, perfectly fine. The whole idea is to not make the mistake again by learning. So let's go ahead and review this uh, here, and we'll call this a wrap. So we have our PEMDAS here, right? So this is what you want to be thinking every time you see 
a problem with a lot of mathematical expressions like this, we you know you're going to have to do some number crunching. So you go to that P and you're like, okay, do I have parentheses? Yes, we do. Okay, so here I have all uh, this parentheses and this parentheses. So before I do anything uh, else, I'm going to focus on getting all this cleaned up to one number. Okay, that's what I'm going to uh, do. So that's what I'm going to focus on uh, first. Now, uh, the next step is E. Do I have any powers? No, I don't have any powers, so I could just keep, you know, I can kind of skip this. You know, you're, you're not going to necessarily have, you know, all these operations in any one particular problem. So now I come to M and D. So I'm like focused on, do I have any multiplication and division? Yes, I do. I have multiplication and division. So I'm like, okay, great. What comes first from left to right? Division comes first. Okay, so I'm going to handle the division first. So let's go ahead and underline it. This is not a bad technique for you uh, for you to use uh, to get these problems right. Just underline the step you need to take. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. Okay, so that is the result of doing this step. So uh, again, are we done inside the parentheses? We're not done, so we have to continue to work that problem. So what do I have? I have addition and multiplication. So multiplication certainly will come first for... Uh, uh, before addition and subtraction. So now this becomes easy. So 10 times 5 is 50. Okay, so there is the result of doing that step. By the way, the way I'm writing this problem, taking one step and just working it down, that's exactly the way you want to work. Your teacher will definitely appreciate that if you work this way. All right, so 10 times 5 is 50. And then, of course, uh, to finish up uh, inside this parentheses, because remember, I'm still working on this uh, P here. So 8 plus 50 is 58. And then when you have a number outside of parentheses like that, that means multiplication. That's my last step. So 3 times 58 is 174. Okay, but if you got this right, well, that's pretty impressive. Some teacher, maybe you watched some of my other videos in the past, or maybe you have a great math teacher, whatever the case is, that's uh, excellent. It shows me that you understand the order of operations. And for that, I am going to reward you with a nice happy face with a good old 1984 flat top haircut. That was pretty awesome back in the day. Maybe not as awesome as your ability to do the order of operations, but pretty uh, pretty good stuff as well. And I'm going to give you a 100% for math today. But uh, here's the deal. Uh, even if you are like, okay, I understand. Uh, understand. Watching me do math is not the same as you really learning this stuff. You have to follow through and practice this. So make sure you practice. If you're taking a course, you know, do all the homework, you know, check all your work. But um, if you need uh, more assistance in this, so I'm going uh, to kind of give you um, two suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out in the order of operations. But really, my best stuff is going to be like in any one of my algebra courses, Algebra 1, algebra, uh, Pre-Algebra. I actually have a Foundations math course as well that can help you out. all depends on what level you're at. But uh, check that out if you need additional help as well. But uh, don't forget to smash this like or that like button before we leave and maybe uh, subscribing to my channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos, if you didn't know that, on my channel from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of all my content if you need further assistance in mathematics, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.